Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to um, greet you all and welcome all participants and thank the organizers. Uh, so it is also important to mention that theater in education started as a movement in Britain in the 60s. And why is it important for us today? Because then it happened as a direct response to the educational reforms that were happening around the country in both uh, theater and the arts. So the process explores the methodology behind how one of the plays was formed out of an anonymous survey in school. The play we did was entitled Things I Want to Say But Never Will. The survey was initiated by a three-minute performance, which is the picture above. Uh, so this was something I was motivated to do. We came into the class and had a three-minute performance. We asked students and inspired them to answer three basic questions. What do you want to say? Why won't you say it? To, to whom would you like to say it? And the performance itself was conducted by students coming um, into these classrooms and no one was prepared for it. They had their mouths covered with, uh, as you can see, with white tape, with one word uh, written on it. The word was connected to some of their experiences they had in the past, something that was outspoken to them sometime during their lifetime. So the replies that we gathered from this survey became a theater play, forum theater play, which I will tell you more about. It is used all over the world for community building and organizing direct social change. So there were uh, the topic that we dealt topics that we dealt with were topics of depression, LGBT, violence, and various things. In the audience we had classmates, teachers, parents, brothers and sisters, uh, friends, community members, in the audience aware of that acting on stage was part of their lives. And the problems we were surrounded with and the oppression anyone is experiencing can and will be investigated by drama. This was like the, the, the most important aspect. So Forum Theatre as such explores this possibility of social transformation, preparing audience and our community members to become participants, to, to not just be objects. They became actors, subjects in their own lives and uh, making them in a way aware of the consequences of oppression. So there were dialogues between mother and daughter, father and son, brother and sister, teacher and student, which highlighted the importance of critical thinking as well. So during the play, members of the audience were in the end involved in the oppression that actors were unable to overcome. Then they had this chance to discuss central characters' tragedy for trying to talk about the problem, trying to resolve it. There are certain rules and certain criteria that need to be covered when we speak about games in the theater of the oppressed. So it's about feeling what we touch listening to what we hear, dynamizing several senses, seeing what we look at and the memory of the senses. These categories are important. For example, feeling what we touch can be divided into some general exercises like walks, messages. There is an exercise which you can do also in the class with uh, students or with your colleagues, like present yourself through the object. So you're actually picking a random object, for example, and you describe yourself by describing the object. So dynamizing several senses brings, again, important issues. An important part of theater of the oppressed is also newspaper theater and image theater. An important story in the 70s, Augusto Ball took part in the literacy plan set up by the Peruvian government and inspired by uh, Paul Fair's method. Uh, he had to think about new ways of practicing theater with the literacy workshop participants with whom he had, he didn't share the same language. So there were dozens of languages and dialects uh, in Peru and still are. So he had to think of something. He decided to use body language instead of verbal communication. So he elaborated and theorized image theater. So image theater is really important aspect of theater of the oppressed, and it can be done in any language, even in a group without people uh, speaking the same language. So three elements, as you can see in the presentation, become obvious. First, Ball uses theater to make both the oppressive situation and mechanism of domination visible. Uh, secondly, the performance is not enough by itself. 
So drama here is to aim to let people try to change representation of their own situation by acting on stage in the first instance, using this fictional space as a tool. Thirdly, Bull conceives theater as a method so that people can perform by themselves the technique he created without needing um, professional actors to act instead of them. So these elements are the, the bedrock of the theater of the oppressed. Thank you so much.